Hey, this is Dr. Corey Glenn, and I wanted to share with you a, a video and a file that I've created that I find to be pretty useful in the creation of your digital denture tooth setups. I also find this really useful in uh, just aesthetic wax ups. So I'm going to go ahead and open a couple of edentulous models in this case. So I'll grab both of the models and pull them over into the Blue Sky software. So here are the models oriented in the case. And so when these are saved, uh, oftentimes these are being scanned by a lab scanner, uh, which is getting a, a great optical model, but it doesn't have necessarily any orientation to uh, what Blue Sky Plan sees as the field of view for uh, you know, a person's head, like the anatomy. So if you look down here in the bottom left corner, you'll see a head, and you see that the models are not oriented in the same uh, position as that. That's actually one of the first things that you have to do uh, when you're going to um, start a case is that you have to line the models up first of all uh, with this. So you could turn on, let's go to the maxillary bottle, you could turn on this adjust position manually and you can do this manually. Um, sometimes that can, still can be a little bit difficult to see. So one of the things that I've created is another file and I've called this the aesthetic gauge. I'm going to drag that over here into the case. Now what this is, is this is a, a couple of planes. And so we have a vertical plane. Uh, this is already set up to be in line with the head. This is a vertical plane. So you would set your, your midline uh, along this. Uh, this would be all of your vertical up and down information. And then you have a horizontal plane. And so this would align to your occlusal plane, your inner pupillary, the campus plane, allotragus. Uh, you could align it to the hip plane, whatever methodology you're using to establish the occlusal plane, this is what you would align parallel to that. Um, so if you've ever used something like the COIS Dento Facial Analyzer, same principle, uh, just a digital version of it. However, one of the other additions that I've done is that obviously these are, these are somewhat transparent. That's important because if you're looking at one of these from uh, the occlusal and you're trying to orient that vertical plane to come through the midline. If the horizontal plane is opaque uh, and is a true plane, you're not going to be able to see through it to do that. Uh, so that's one reason that you can see through it. But secondly, you notice these lines and what these lines are is a grid. And so if you look at the smaller squares, these are all one square millimeter. Now, one of the things we know from uh, removable process is there's many studies correlating the distance from the incisive papilla down to the incisal edge. And they, they correlate that with various arch forms with the size of the patient. Bottom line, it's a very useful indicator uh, to establish an initial proposal for your occlusal plane. So suppose you had a case where you have nothing more than um, a couple of uh, edentulous models and a mush bite. And maybe you were going to go ahead and do a temporary denture or uh, some wax rims, but you're going to have to establish an occlusal plane and an incisal edge position uh, to give you an indication for that. So the very first step is, again, you can look at this and our plane is aligned to uh, the model in Blue Sky Plan. So very first thing I'm going to do is position this maxillary model so I'll choose upper tissue model in model manipulation, adjust manually. And now I'm going to take this and I'm going to orient this to my plane up here. Okay. So if I look at it this way, I want to make this pass through. Let's hide this lower model for just a moment. I want to make this pass through the midline. And so we're going to go right through the incisive papilla and also through that mid palatal suture. So right about there. So we've established the midline uh, position relative to the face. We can also move this up. And I'll show you why I like to position it roughly in about that position here in a moment. That undid the positioning of this just slightly. Okay, and then as far as our, our cant uh, to either side here, I'm going to establish my occlusal plane here based on the hip plane. So that's your hamular notches and your incisive papilla. 
So what I want to do visually is I want to make sure that this plane is coming through my incisive papilla and through both hamular notches in the same position. And if I look from this side, as you can see, it's not doing that. So I need to rotate this model down slightly. And now let's look at it again. So now we seem to be going through both hamular notches at the same position. Um, and we're going through uh, the incisive papilla. Now that's useful because, if, again, if I was just tricked into using the parallelism of the base and I oriented that, I would end up with a cant to my occlusal plane because it really doesn't matter what the base is doing. You're after what the actual bone and, and tissue structure would be relative to the face. So the hip plane is a very useful plane for establishing that. Now once I've done that, I don't touch the rotation rings because I don't want to screw up that orientation, but I'm going to scoot this up to approximately the area right in here where those one millimeter marks start. Okay, the rest of these lines all establish five millimeters apart. That's all just a five millimeter grid. But what I want to do is get right here where I can utilize these one millimeter squares because now if I turn this uh, positioning uh, widget off. Now if I wanted to uh, go based on some anatomic averages, so let's say I have a square uh, a square arch form, uh, I generally know that it's going to be four to six millimeters horizontally anterior to the occlusal, uh, I'm sorry, to the incisive papilla. So I could go from incisive papilla right here and I could count one, two, three, four. Uh, once again, based on the, the size of the patient, there's anatomical averages. We can maybe come down seven millimeters uh, vertically from the incisive papilla to establish our incisal edge position. So we could now come one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And what I like to do is go ahead and put this model where it is seven down. So once again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and over four. One, two, three, four. So right there, that's my incisive papilla. And so in essence, by doing that, and by the fact that I've established this to be parallel with the hip plane, now my tooth setup is going to become extremely easy because all I have to do is bring those teeth in in their totality and drop them right onto this plane, make them perfectly parallel to that, and I, it establishes my incisal edge position. Uh, so real quick before I demonstrate that, let me go and align the lower model. So the lower model currently is not oriented. I'll turn it back on. Uh, and turn the grid off for just a moment. So how do you align, now that you've moved the global positioning of this maxilla to conform to the head, how do you realign the lower to that? It's very simple. You go to model manipulation. You're going to choose uh, your lower tissue model in the uh, drop down menu. You're going to choose direct and then align to model and you'll choose that you want to align it to the maxilla. And what it's going to do when you choose this is it's going to reestablish their original position relative to one another. Make sure you do not have a line by points checked on. You want to just do this strictly off of their uh, previous alignment. So when I do that now, you see that I have my models. They're oriented perfectly in relation to the head and blue sky plan. And now you would be ready to go over to the denture module. And I'm not going to do the entire setup, but I do want you to see how, how helpful this is now in establishing that setup. So we've gone into the denture module now. I'm going to turn back on our grid that we've created. Again, uh, this does not necessarily coincide exactly to the bases that I had created because I just guessed it where to make those bases be flat I, by eyeballing it. This hip plane is much more telling of where the occlusal plane should be. So let's choose a tooth mold set. I'm going to go with the Nobilium T11 setup uh, and let's go ahead and choose all the teeth uh, minus the second molars because I don't think they'll probably fit on this case and we're going to add those teeth as a chain. I hold down shift and left click to drop those teeth into the arch. All 
our tooth set has been imported and now again this is the beauty of the the aesthetic gauge is that we can now pull these over and I can very easily tell what I need to do with my occlusal uh, plane. So it's off the table more over here than it was over here. So I pull that into alignment, get that parallel. I look at it from the lateral position, scoot this back, and I can tell that this needs to come slightly down. Okay, I'm going to align this with the midline. And so remember we established the midline based on uh, previously just dropping that through the size of papilla and the vertical plane uh, through that midline suture and now I remember established the incisal edge position should be just sitting right here on this and so we've just done this setup in no time at all it looks like I could have left those second molars but it was extremely easy to do this setup and one of the things I know from teaching this in courses is excuse me, that sometimes people have difficulty in visualizing exactly where to make that, uh, that occlusal plane be unless you've got a rim scanned in where you established an incisal plane or a, an occlusal plane. Uh, it's very difficult to just eyeball this. So this is a very useful tool. I'm going to put the, the link to this STL in the comments section of this video. Uh, so download it, feel free to use it, and hopefully you'll find that helpful in your denture setups, your aesthetic wax ups, uh, anything where you really need to keep track of, of vertical distance, horizontal distances, and just the overall symmetry on the patient. So I hope you find that useful.